Speaking of GMs, Kyle Dubas, GM of the Leafs. Kyle, what's it going to be like scouting the Blue Jackets for two straight months? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't think uh, <laughs> I don't think that's the plan. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think our focus is going to be on on ensuring that our team is in the best place it can be, and and uh, and then as we get ramped up as we normally would heading into a series a week or so before, if you have, if you're afforded that much time in the, in a regular season into the normal cycle of playoffs, then you start to focus on it. But I think right now our focus, uh, we, we know that they're, they're a very dangerous team, incredibly hardworking team, very well managed and well coached. We know that it's a massive challenge and, and in order to set ourselves up to that, we have to make sure that, we're giving our players the resources to to get themselves in the best condition possible, so that they can be healthy and safe and, and ready to roll. So um, that's that's the the uh, place we're at right now. Kyle Dubas, general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs, joining us here on Tim's List. The last time we talked to you, uh, we were talking about preparing for the unknown and how hard that was. And basically, every GM and commissioner that we were lucky enough to talk to after that. I talked to them about having to prepare for the unknown. Now that you have some sort of structure placed in front of you, does that, like, how much does the focus now, and I'm not just talking about the Blue Jackets, I'm just talking about all those things that you're talking about, bringing your players in, um, having some sort of mini camp, having some sort of training camp, like, how much did yesterday help you guys narrow that focus? Well, I think what it did is is 100%. Uh, Tim, you, it, it's really hard when you don't know what you're preparing for, and and when the end point that you're you're looking for preparing for, whether it's your show every day or a, a test in the future or something, when you don't know what it is, it's really hard to know what to do and how to direct your organization and and especially the players and the coaching staff and the medical staff. And and now that there is a, an end point. Uh, to this, and we know at at some point, um, if if we're given the clearance to do so, and, and it's safe to do so, and and it's best for the communities to do so, that, that we're we're going to be playing the Columbus Blue Jackets in a in a best of five series, and then we're going to have to win um, up to 19 games to win the Stanley Cup. Um, it, it does give you a real sense of of clarity in terms of what you're working towards, and. And uh, once we start to get the dates rounded out for the different phases, phase two and then phase three, and then the actual um, uh, resumption of competition in phase four, I think uh, having that uh, yesterday with, with the endpoint in mind certainly helps to provide some clarity uh, to our staff and to our players and, and makes things uh, a little bit easier rather than just trying to project ahead when you don't really have any of the, of the answers. Right. Kyle, this is day 76 since the league shut down, and I can guarantee you, as Tim and I have prepped for this show, we have many times not known where the end point is for us. <laughs> so we've, we've been, I, 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 I completely agree with you on that front. I completely Even agree Even outside of pandemics, sometimes we exactly. don't know about uh, that. Exactly. That's, that's, yes, that's a topic for, that's a valid topic, Tim. Kyle Dubas, GM of the Leafs here on Tim and Sid. Uh, we always appreciate when he gives us some time here. Kyle, I mean, I feel like I have to ask it, but I know it's an unfair question, so forgive me as I ask it. But as, as we sit here in the 14-day quarantine in Canada when you come in is still in effect, like can you even plan to call guys back from Europe or the States? I mean, I know you had, you had Freddie, Freddie and, and, and Austin Matthews rooming in Phoenix. Like what, what text did you get from certain players yesterday or the last 24 hours, and what are you telling them? Uh, I think the you know we, we had a few players a few weeks ago um, make their way back here without really any indication that it was going to – and in the, in the in the last, you know, really since Sunday night, we've had the majority of our players reach out and seek clarification on the on the quarantine um, uh, that that's issued under the Quarantine Act here in Canada and how it impacts them. Um, you know, I think they've they've had questions about you know where they see that going in the future, so on and so forth. And our guidance has has just been, you know, we we don't know um, what that's going to hold. It's it's the law now, and so that's what we have ex- expect. And we I think we have to operate as though um, that that's what exists now. So it may change, but this is how this is the conditions that that currently um, govern you if you return to Canada. So uh, with all of them, I think they each of them is in a, in a different uh, situation. Uh, the players coming back from Europe were almost certainly. 
um, you know, there, there, there's not a whole lot of options in terms of flights and so on and so forth. So it's just been trying to provide some guidance to the players in terms of what, what we would like as an organization and really where they're at it. It is a voluntary phase. So, you know, we can't say, Hey, we would, you know, you need to be here. Um, but I think our, our facility and, and what we've done to prepare for everything opening, it, it will be extremely safe and, and a great place to train if the players elect to do so. I think it's just been educating the players on what we're doing, what's going to govern them as they return to Canada, if they're outside of Canada, um, and, and just make sure that, that they're aware of everything that we would provide if they were in quarantine in terms of support and, and as much as we can to, to help them get through it. But um, right. it's, it's a tough question to answer, and, and especially when players have um, places where they can train and, and access, whether it's in their home or um, or as different very private facilities open in terms of uh, off-ice workouts and wherever they're at. It, it's certainly, uh, I understand where the players are at in terms of saying, well, geez, I can work out here if I come back to Toronto. I've kind of got to be in my condo or my house for 14 days, and I don't want to lose those 14 days. So it, it's tough. And you try to just go through each individual circumstance as they come and, and try to help the players as best you can. Then in the end, during this phase, they, they have to make the decision that they feel is best Correct. for, for right. them. Um, and and uh, we'll roll from there. Kyle, have you gotten any word if any of your players aren't comfortable with returning to play under these circumstances? Uh, we haven't. We have had a lot of players ask, and I think it's been a great part of it uh, has been that they, they have had a lot of questions for our medical people. I, I know that the league and, and the players association have, have given the players a, a great opportunity to ask questions of, of their different infectious disease specialists and, and the various people that are being uh, now used as consultants for the league and for the players association and for each individual team as they each prepare to open their facility. And I think the players have asked a lot of good questions uh, about it. And, and I think we want to encourage them that if they do have any concerns that they do have any uh, fears uh, whatsoever about the virus or about how it could impact themselves and, or, or their families. Uh, we want them to ask the questions and we want them to be comfortable. But as of this moment, we haven't had any player state uh, specifically to us that they are uncomfortable. But um, I think as the reality of the phase starts opening, maybe per- perhaps those questions become more prevalent. Kyle Dubas, GM of the Toronto Maple Leafs here on Tim and Sid. Kyle, I, um, I noticed the the 50 number thrown around in terms of how big uh, a group of personnel you can bring with you to wherever the hubs are. I didn't see a lot of clarification on family members. What are you hearing along those lines? How, how, how many will be allowed? What's, what's the feeling? Uh, I know the players, and, and I mean, Frank, I think for, for all of us, if you're, if you're, um, if it's, if it's going to be a, a month, I mean, you, you hope it's going to, once you're at the hub, you're there as long as possible. Cause it means that you can continue to win and you continue yeah. to advance. So, um, it's, it, it's hard to say. I think we, we've all been with our families now for, um, 76 days or 77 days or whatever it's been. Um, so I, I know thinking of, of not being with them and just can speak to my own case, it, it, it would be, it's strange to think about. And, uh, you certainly have grown accustomed to operating in a totally different way. Um, so I, I would say that, you know, with, with so with, with things changing so rapidly, I think back to where we were three months ago, if you progress this, you know, a couple of months ahead and have no idea where we're going to be in terms of testing or, or vaccination or therapeutic uh, applications that can help, uh, help, help uh, deal with, with the virus. Um, my hope is that we're at a place where as things progress in the, in the tournament that uh, the families would be, would be permitted. I know it's been brought up and, and discussed uh, from the players. And I know that the league and the PA are both certainly uh, looking uh, into solutions on it, but and, and I know that in the end that they'll do the right thing. So um, uh, we'll we'll see what what comes up from from that. But m- my hope would be, especially as things get deeper into the tournament and the and the moments become a little bit more special uh, for the players and and everything that they've worked towards, that at the very least the players uh, are able to have some uh, family members there uh, as select as that may be. Kyle Dubas, general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs, joining us here on on Tim and Sid. Do you like the tournament format? I'm just happy that we're talking about getting back to anything. <laughs> so um, for, for us, it means, I guess, as I said, it means we have to win uh, up to 19 games. 
to win, um, which which I I think is a is a great challenge, and and uh, I think certainly ends any discussion of whether it's a legitimate competition when you have to win more games than you did previously for a team like ours. Uh, I think that that uh, increases the challenge, and I I frankly think I only really think of our team in this context, um, but uh, in my opinion. For us, it's it's probably what we need at, at this stage in our growth and then in our development, because we know that the challenge is going to be massive and and that the the obstacle is much bigger in terms of having to win more uh, and defeat more opponents and and uh, it starts off with a with an extremely uh, dangerous challenger right away. So for us, uh, I think that the the key is as we look at it is that we have to do everything we can uh, in the next number of months to get. Um, our organization into the best possible fitness uh, level it can it can attain, and uh, that's really uh, going to be our focus, as, especially as we get closer to phase three in the training camp portion of it. But also, what will be uh, certainly when our when our players are asking us what, what we think is important uh, and what they're doing in this 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 period right now and then into phase two, we have to uh, push our our whole staff and and our players to really get into the best level of condition they can as we head into this because I just think that's where um, the great benefit will lie if you can be there as you, as you head into it so um, I like the I like what was decided and got no issue with it I think you can nitpick at anything that's going to be decided in any sport right now but like we're just happy that if things continue to progress positively or can or can progress positively in some areas of the country in the world that that will uh, we'll get back to competition. Kyle Dubas, GM of the Leafs, here on Tim and Sid. Kyle, here's, uh, I mean, you know what your fan base is saying every given moment. You're, you're, you're not uh, illiterate to social media. You're a young man. You know what's out there. The one thing I have constantly heard since rumblings of this format were out there and since yesterday, since it was finalized, the Leafs and their fan base, as hungry a fan base as exists in the National Hockey League, goes on a run, wins it, and fans around the NHL say, well, it wasn't a real cup. It's a weird cup. It's an asterisk cup. It's not legitimate. How would you respond to that? I think people can say whatever they want, and it won't make a lick of difference to, uh, to us and uh, to our fans and, and certainly not to the staff and players. And, and I would guarantee you that the other 23 teams that are, that are going to be going into this competition will feel the same way. Uh, I think because of how difficult it's going to be with, with the, the lockdown in the middle of the season, uh, or sorry, at the end of the season, and then right into this competition after a training camp. Uh, I think the, the amount of uh, how difficult this is going to be for the players and the coaching staffs and, and, uh, and whole organizations to, to be able to, in July and August, where the conditions are probably going to be much hotter and much more difficult, I think this is probably going to be one of the more difficult championships to win. And uh, if people want to, whoever wins it, whatever one of the 24 teams wins it, I think anybody that takes a shot that it's illegitimate, especially when 85% of the season or, or whatever the exact percentage of the season was already played, I, I think that's frankly stupid. And, and that's probably the best way I can put it. Agreed. Add the global pandemic to all that. And I think that if you end up on the top at the end of all this, man, you've done something. Uh, listen, wh- one of the things, one of the takeaways from the announcement that was uh, that was prevalent in our conversations yesterday on this show was that it was unfair to a Boston team that was 10 points clear in the Eastern Conference that they might end up fourth in the East when this round robin was done. Do you understand that frustration from some, or does it just mean a better chance that you finally miss them in the first couple of rounds? <laughs> um I, I could certainly, I mean, I think people have asked us the same thing, right? You know, you guys, your percentage chances of making it were, it were X, like what, 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 using whatever model you want, whether it's right. 70 or 80%, and now they're back down to, you know, 50, 50. And in the case of a Boston or Colorado, St. Louis, Tampa Bay, the rest, you know, they, they certainly are, are going from having a, a very strong, especially in Boston's case of, of being the number one seed to, you know, potentially playing in the seeding, um, the seeding round robin and potentially being fourth. I just think that with the time off and, and with, um, with coming back in and having, you know, the training camp and then maybe a few exhibition games, 
I think the level of randomness will be so high that um, uh, whether you're first or fourth, uh, I don't know that in the end it will it will really matter. Um, and I think right. the same applies for us, whether we were guaranteed one of the spots in the playoffs or whether we were going to be, um, you know, playing in this uh, qualification round. I, I think that it would be certainly be nice to uh, have it be exactly what it was in the regular season, but this is not a, a perfect uh, situation by any means. And, and I think that all the people involved on the NHL and NHLPA side have tried to create a format that um, is most fair to reflect what was left in the season and to the teams that still had a chance and incorporate the most amount of um, teams and players and, and markets as possible, but also try to um, reflect where every team was at. And I think, frankly, when I can only speak to us, if, if we didn't want to be in, you know, you could never have predicted that uh, on March 12th that the season would be suspended, but if we didn't want to be in that position of being so close to the line. We, we had to play better during the year and uh, be more consistent during the year. So this is where uh, where we're at. I think we're, we're right where we're supposed to be, and, and the challenge ahead of us will be great for us. Kyle Dubas, Leafs GM here on Tim and Sid. Kyle, you have a young man in your system named Nick Robertson coming off a 55, like I'm, like you don't know that. Forgive me how I phrase that. I'm an idiot. <laughs> 55 goal. I just, as I was saying it, I'm like, that's an idiotic way to frame that to Kyle. My apologies. You know. 50, hey, Kyle, do you know he scored 55 goals for Peter Rowe this year? I'm sure you do. Um, you, you, earlier today in, in a conference games? call, 46 games. Yes, Tim. I'm looking at the same stats. <laughs> um, you, uh, for those who didn't hear earlier today, Kyle Dubas uh, was on a conference call with, with local media and said that Kyle is going to add Nick Robertson, who's 18 years old, to the roster for this tournament. Kyle, um, why? What will this do for your team in the so, short term, and what does this do for his development in your eyes? So I'll just clarify, number one, he, he's going to come in for, uh, I mean, if he would like to, he's, he's on his way here. He's going to voluntarily report in for the phase two part and then the training camp part of it. And then we'll make our decision on, on whatever, with whatever is decided in terms of the process of naming your roster, then we'll make the decision. So whether I misspoke earlier or, or, or not, uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. But the question was, was he going to be a part of it? And my answer was yes. He's going to be a part of phase too and uh, because he's already traveled uh, into Ontario so that he can do his quarantine and then he'll be part of phase two and phase three whatever he gets from there will be whatever he earns in training camp uh in, in the phase three part of it frankly um in terms of why you know we would we would want him if he elected to to be part of phase two and phase three I think he's he's earned it with his play um you know going back to last summer in the world junior uh, summer showcase and then uh, in our training camp, and then certainly the season with Peterborough, and then in addition to that, the, his, his World Junior uh, performance. Um, we just think that he, he's a player that uh, he continues to uh, greatly improve. I think more important than anything with Nick is that he, I'm certain that he's kept himself in great physical condition throughout um, this quarantine and, and lockdown portion of all of our lives, and, and I, I know what his focus is like, and what his commitment level is like. And uh, I think regardless of whether he, he makes the final roster that goes into the, the hub city, wherever that may be, I think this experience will be great for him to be around our guys that, that are volunteering to be here and in small groups. And then as part of the group in training camp and, and give him a chance to compete for, uh, for a roster spot with a small uh, number of people uh, that are going to, that are going to be in the formal training camp stage. And uh, so I think at the very least, right. it's a great experience for him and his development. Um, at best, yeah, at best for him, he, you know, he continues to show the strides that he showed during the year and forces, forces our hand and, and finds his way onto the roster and, and into the lineup. So it'll be up to him, but it, at, at the very worst, if, even if he doesn't make it onto that, I think it's a, it, into the, into the formal tournament. I think it's a great experience for him and his development. And, and I know he'll be uh, raring to go uh, whenever uh, he's cleared to begin participating. Um, thank you for the clarification there, Kyle. Appreciate it. One last thing before we let you go. Regular season is over. You guys played 70 games. Do You don't have to give me names. Did you get texts from players pissed they didn't hit some bonuses? Did, did, you, get, did you get some messages saying, Kyle, yeah, you could save that 30 Gs. You got it. It's yours. Yeah, we... we uh... We're out of it. You know, it's interesting. We we are beyond that. Really, that portion where we have a lot of the, as as everyone well knows, we went through some contract negotiations in the last number of years, <laughs> yes, which ended, yeah, heard, yeah. which yeah. 
<laughs> which every which uh, which ended the entry level uh, portion of the contracts that have the uh, the bonuses in them, and uh, so we we didn't really have a whole lot of those. It was disappointing though. I think you know with Austin not having a chance to to really challenge for the the Maple Leaf goal record held by Rick Five, and you know ending off one goal um, one goal behind Ovechkin and, and Pasternak at uh, at forty seven. So. I'm I'm sure uh, you know Austin had a great year for us, and it, it would have been nice to see him uh, continue to push down the stretch, especially as we had guys you know with Morgan and then Jake Muzzin coming back from injury. I think that only would have uh, aided uh, that push for him to uh, to win the Rocket Richard Trophy, and would have been a, a great accomplishment for him and well deserved. So that that's the only one disappointing part of it for for us is the uh, is that Austin doesn't get a chance to go for the Maple Leaf single season record, uh, nor the Rocket Richard, but. Um, I think in, in his case, we can expect him to be in that race for, for a long time in his career as a Maple Leaf. Uh, Kyle Dubas here on Timothy. we got less than 30 seconds here, so I just want to ask you, can you explain the draft lottery to us in those 30 seconds? I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> kidding. I can give it, I can give it a go, Timmy. I can give it a go. Okay. Well, time me, honestly, with Kyle. Hey, Kyle, I'm going to give this a go in 25 right. seconds. I'm going to try and explain this. All right. Yeah. Count me down, Tim. Give me a three count. Count me down. Three, two, and one, go. On June 26, three lotteries will take place for the first, second, and third picks. If any team outside the bottom seven gets the pick, there'll be a second phase. All teams out of the play-in round have the same odds to get that pick. Boom. Do you do it, Kyle? Yeah, you got to give them the horns or whatever. You yeah. got to do it. <laughs> 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 Sarah gets the horns from Dubas. Kyle, you know, Kyle's been on I a little thought bit. thought it was different horns. Ka- yeah, Kyle's been on a little bit. Well played. <laughs> yes. Well played. Hey, uh, we appreciate the time and wish you and the family nothing but the best uh, moving forward. And hopefully uh, next time we're just we're just talking hockey here. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Be well.